Okay. By now, most of my studies are performed in the lab using the Cocodinian culture. So as a graduate student in marine science, so please never forget our field work. This is my sampling site at Southampton Marine Station. Um, all the fourth part is a small, semi-enclosed system. It is an ideal system for population study because the residence time is very high, which can minimize the transportation by marine currents. Okay. How, how long is the residence time? Uh, I don't know. We don't have the time. We don't have the data. I thought you said it was very high. Uh, yes. Okay. Pro All right. Uh, right. Okay. I, I can't say that, but it seems it should be high, but we don't have the data to support this. Okay. Okay. Uh, my study is a copy for the population dynamics during the Cocodinia bloom. I focused on early life stages where peak mortality occurs. Uh, most uh, studies of the zooplankton population uh, dynamics are performed uh, during nutritious algal blooms, such as uh, spring delta blooms. And it has, uh, it, it has been reported that density dependent mortality control the copepod population in the field. So, which means uh, copepod adults can feed on their eggs and not pluralize. So, my, my question is. What factors control the copepod population during harmful algal blooms? Are they the same ways as the nutritious algal blooms? I measured the copepodinia cell density. This is the copepodinia cell density with the time. So you can see copepodinia blooms in 2008 was moderate. The cell densities are low compared to the other years. And also I measured the copepod egg production and uh, egg hatching success. This is the copepod egg production rate during the cocodinia bloom. I also measured copepod abundance at each stage from the nuclei to the adults. Here, I only showed the abundance of the first nuclear stage and the female. Then, I used all this data to calculate the two important uh, population parameters. Embryonic mortality and the birth rate. I also calculated their difference. Now you can see the red line is a reference line, zero. So this result shows copywood embryonic mortality was always greater than the birth rate during the Copidinia bloom. Even though the cocodinia bloom in 2008 was moderate, the cell densities are low compared to the other years. Okay. I, uh, I use cross correlation function to evaluate the strength and the direction of time lag relationship between two time series data. X axis is the lags in days, Y axis is cross correlation function. So, the dotted lines are 95% confidence limits. If course for if course correlation function exceeds the dotted lines, the relationship between two time series data is significant. Now you can see the copyhold embryonic mortality is related to cell density of the cocodinia with a lag of four days. And the copyhold birth rate, uh, copyhold birth rate is related to copepod abundance with a lag of 40. Now we can say copepod population during a, uh, during a cocodinia blooms are controlled by two factors. The first factor is the ever density dependent mortality. And the second factor is the copepod density dependent birth rate. And those population regulations during harmful algal blooms are different from the nutritious algal blooms. Okay, now we know Cocodinia can use chemical defense and morphological defense to reduce uh, grazing mortality. Okay, so the final story is uh, can copepods fight back or are they just the losers in this race? <laughs> <laughs> First, I used a common garden experiment 
to compare the population difference between the bloom area and the non-bloom area. I collect the six population, the six copypod population, three populations from the bloom area, and another three from the non-bloom area. Okay. So those data are from the bloom area, and those are from the non-bloom area. So the yellow bar is the cell density of the opinion. So you can see, cell densities are several thousand cells per milliliter in bloom area. But there are no detectable cells in non-bloom area. Okay. And also, the quality A concentration in bloom area are higher than non-bloom area. You can see very low quality A concentration in non-bloom area. Um, I incubated the copy plants in the lab for two generations to minimize the environmental effect. Then I measure copy plant egg production rate when feeding on rhodomonas and the cochineal. Now you can see copy plant uh, egg production rates when feeding on the cochineal was significantly lower than uh, rhodomonas in three populations from the non plum area but only significant in one of three populations from the bloom area, okay? Then I use their ratio to indicate the copy pod resistance to cochineal. Now you can see copy pods from the bloom area are more resistant to cochineal than copy pods from the non-bloom area, which suggests that copy pods in the bloom area have involved the local adaptation to cochineal blooms. I also performed an artificial selection experiment in, in the lab. Copy pearls from the non-bloom area are split into the two lines, the control line and the selection line. Okay. Copy pearls in the control line are offered the good food, 100% rhodomonas where copy pearls in the selection line are offered the bad food, 50% rhodomonas and 50% cochineal. Okay. At each generation, copy pearl resistance was measured uh, using egg production by acid. Now let's see the result. The red is the selection line, the green is the control line. So you can see copy pearl resistance gradually increased with time in the selection line. Okay. So the following question is, whether evolutionary change of the resistance is reversible? So I switched the bad food to good food in the selection line. Now there is no selection force for resistance in the selection line. Right? So you can see the result. So copy pod resistance uh, gradually decreased with the time. So this research, uh, the, the, this experiment showed both evolution and the loss of the resonance can occur within a few generations in the lab studies. Okay, let's see this graph. Y axis is the mean resonance in units of standard deviation. X axis is the generation. The slope, uh, the slope of the regression line is the evolutionary rate. The red is the evolution of resistance. The, uh, the green is the loss of the resistance. Now you can see the rates of the evolution and the loss of re uh, resistance are similar. There is no significant difference between them. So this, this research showed evolution and the loss of the resistance can occur on the same time scale. 